Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center, and today we're going to complete this design. Now, you all voted. You wanted to see a pattern, so I went ahead and made one for you. This is the exact same pattern from the painting, except you can print it out on cardstock and just using any standard inkjet printer or laser jet printer. And you just dot directly on the paper and you can follow along with the video or you can do your own thing. Use your own colors, get creative with it, and practice all of the dotting techniques that we use in this video. You're gonna see teeny tiny dots, swooshes, uh, drop shapes, walking the dots, all kinds of things and uh, I hope you all love it. I love it and it's it's a lot of fun. So go to the Dotting Center, download the PDF and get to dotting. Enjoy it. Okay you guys, today is gonna be a really hard mandala to do. But we're just going to go through it and do it in five, four, three, two, one. Come on, let's do this. So that was my daughter, Evie. I just got this new microphone uh, to up the quality of my audio tracks and microphones are irresistible to children. So I recorded a bunch of just classic uh, kid talk. And I'll be probably peppering that through my videos just, you know, because it's fun for me. Because that's why we're here, right? Oh no, no, we're here to paint mandalas. So we're gonna complete this design and um, yeah, you guys, if you're still with me, you have seen part one and part two, and now comes the final bits, pulling everything together, and it's gonna be a lot of fun, so stick around. Okay, so this shape requires different size dots. I can tell because there's a big space here, and then it gets tiny, and then it gets big again. So I'm going to use my largest stylus tool to walk the dots in that area so that it fills a, from a big size dot down to a small size dot. Dot, center, dot here, dot here, dot here, dot here. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to my silicone, my pointed silicone tool. And I love this tool because it's a little bit bouncy. It's got a nice feel to it when it hits the canvas. And you can also load it up with a lot of paint and get similar size dots all in a row without having to reload. Now right here, I want you to watch as I goof up this line. And it's okay, nobody's perfect. But I'm kind of going in between dots and not really following the same pattern that I had in the previous section. Okay, so I noticed the problem, but I don't fix it. I just go right ahead and do the same thing here. That doesn't look as good as this. See how they're all kind of in their own lane and they look a lot better separated. So what I did was I finally got got the point and I fixed it on this section and everything is in its own lane and it's separate and it looks a lot better. So that's that's something that I note for next time. Um, but yeah, don't do what I did. Follow those uh, the first and last section as far as dotting that row. So here's a cool trick to make sure that your dots are all equally spaced. What you want to do is place the first dot, the last dot, and then in the spaces in between those two dots, you just keep putting a dot right in between, right in the center of those two. Um, and if you watch here, that's how I divide each of those sections and they all kind of end up perfectly spaced 
if I were to just make a dot, add a space, make a dot, add a space, it would not end up being perfectly um, divided in that section. So that's the way to do it. I'm going crazy with the dots. Hey, so speaking of going crazy with the dots, I thought I'd take a second to talk about art therapy and dotting. And I gotta say, this is the most meditative, chill, and de stressing art that I've ever done in my entire life and I've heard this from other dotting artists that this particular art form is very relaxing and therapeutic so um, I'm not the only one I find it incredibly satisfying and um, it's my chill time so how many of you use dotting as a way to relax? So tell me in the comments below, do you guys feel the same way when you dot? Is it relaxing or, I don't know, are you guys completely stressed out the entire time? <laughs> just let me know, how do you feel when you dot? Um, maybe you just do it because it's pretty and you like to have pretty paintings. Um, maybe I'm overthinking things. That's a possibility too, but uh, yeah, I'm curious. Let me know. All right, so I'm using Arteza Crimson Red for the corner decorative elements, and that's where we're at now. Okay, are you guys ready to be shocked? So for this painting, I only used four different colors plus gold and white. So I used magenta, crimson red, emerald green, and thalo green, but I ended up adding white to get all those different variations on those colors. So this is another reason why I'm never going to buy pastel paints again, because why buy pastels when you can make pastels by just adding white? Um, it also forces you to keep yourself in the same color families, so you're not, you know, mixing it up too much. It kind of reigns in the color a little bit, even though in this piece, I admit, there's a lot going on. But I like it that way. I think it's, um, it works. Okay, so here I'm using the stylus tool to make swoosh shapes. Um, that's in the, it's also good to practice this first on paper to get the feel right, but once you get it, you've got it. So in case you're wondering, this is actual speed. Um, this painting, I would have to guess, probably took four hours or something. I don't know. It's hours and hours, but I lose time when I paint, so I... I have no idea how long it took. Plus it's all broken up into nap times because I have a young one. So um, who knows? It's all time well spent though, I guarantee you. So this is my very favorite gold paint. It's golden fluid iridescent gold and it is just I will happily pay the $25 for a four ounce bottle of this stuff because it's just that pretty. So I'm always up for trying new paints and I'm dying to know, do any of you have a specific brand and color of paint, your very favorite paint that you use that you could recommend? Leave it in the comments below. I would love to try it. Thanks. I'm going crazy with the dots. So dotting these last few rows, what you'll see is I tend to use more muted, boring colors, maybe darker colors, because 
what I feel is the most interesting part of the project is the center. So you start off really exciting and detailed and intricate and bright in the center. And then towards the outer rows of the piece, you want to kind of have that recede to the background because you don't want you don't want it competing with what's happening in the center. Otherwise, it could be a little uh, too much. And this piece kind of flirts with that a little bit. But yeah, so what I usually try to do is start off with a bang, make it real interesting, and then um, towards the end kind of fade out and make it a little bit more boring. Okay, so this next bit is out of focus. So I'm going to take the time to talk about perfectionism with our work. And I know that a lot of people struggle with it. I know I certainly do. When I see this, I cringe a little bit. Um, but what I've learned is that you kind of have to let go. Done is better than perfect. And especially with art, sometimes when you mess up, that tends to be something that you either learn from or grow with. And um, a mistake is never really a mistake. It's always something that will lead you to better things next time. So now we have the entire canvas covered in dots and they're all dry. So we get to come in and put top dots on now. This is one of my favorite parts right at the end is just detailing and finishing everything and making it look even more intricate. So this is what's going on in my head when I do top dots. So for this piece, for the top dots, I used a tint of the color that is underneath. If you're unsure about what color to use for a top dot, you can always try two different colors and see which one you like best. And the one that you don't like, you can easily just scrape off with a flat uh, silicone tool and um, move along. I do it all the time and it really helps try and find the perfect color for your top dots. And voila! We made it! So yay! We made it to the end of another video tutorial. Oh! Oh, thank you! Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Um, I hope you loved this video as much as I loved making it. Um, keep in mind, if you want to support me, if you like my videos, consider going to the Dotting Center on Etsy where I have a full line of stencils and patterns and tools and everything you could possibly want to get started dotting or to continue dotting. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you at the next video.